Welcome back. I'm Jana, and we've been working through the seven easy steps to getting started in mobile data collection using Kobo Toolbox. So this series has been for absolute beginners, and we started with creating your username and password in Kobo Toolbox, and we installed the Kobo Collect app on your phone, then set up the settings in Kobo Collect. We created your first questionnaire. We got the questionnaire in your app and filled it out. And then we also did it on the browser as well, didn't we? And then we checked the data was coming into our server. Great. We downloaded it into Excel so we could go and analyze it. But there's one more step that's actually going to bring this all together and make sure that you can actually run a project collecting data. And that is step seven. You're going to invite other colleagues to collect data too for their data to come into your server so you can kind of expand what you're doing. Now, like I've said before, if you want to follow on here on our YouTube channel, feel free. If you would like to take this course at the Humanitarian Data Academy, go and uh, log in, create your free account and take this course. It's still free. And so it's free here. It's free there. It's free everywhere. Uh, but what you can do there is as you watch videos, it actually just tracks your progress in the background. And when you complete the course, you'll get a certificate that you can then share on LinkedIn, build your CV, that kind of thing. So if that would be useful for you, go over to the Humanitarian Data Academy and create an account and take it there. Okay. So we are back in Kobo Toolbox and we're going to invite our colleagues to collect data with us. So we're in our first questionnaire. You can see we have those two submissions still. I'm going to open that up. Now, on the right hand side, you'll see there is a share project button. You can click that and it will open up this dialog box. The other place where you can find to share this project is go to your settings. And on the left hand side, you'll see sharing. OK, so either one of those is perfectly acceptable and easy, but it is in two locations. Now you can see that who has access Jana R test, right? And you can see that I am the owner of this project because I created it. Okay. I own it. Now, if you tap add user, we can now add the username of anyone else who has an account on the same server we do. So you remember back in step one, we were looking at the EU server or the global server uh, because we have an EU server and you can see it up in uh, the URL eu.cobotoolbox.org, right? We are in the EU server. Anyone else who has an account on the EU server, we can share our form with. Okay. So I've got another account uh, called Jana Test, not Jana R Test, Jana Test. Okay. And I'm going to share this account with this person, okay, with this other user. Now we could allow them to view the form. We could allow them to edit the form. Okay. They could go in and change the questions. We could allow them to see submissions, or if we don't want to let them see all the submissions, we could allow um, them to see submissions from only uh, specific users or only based on a condition. Okay. And there are lists of, of conditions there. But let's say I, I only want to let Jana test see her own submissions, for example, then I would just put that username in there. We can allow them to add submissions. Um, we can allow them to edit submissions from only specific users like Jana test. Okay. So I'm just saying Jana test can only see submissions that were made by Jana test and they can edit submissions made by Jana test, or I don't want them to edit and they can validate and delete as well. Now these ones, I would say edit, validate and delete. You can feel free. I'm not going to go into the details here of what that means or uh, based on a condition, anything like that, because that's more advanced stuff and you'll get there and you don't need to worry too much about it. But um, I would say viewing submissions and adding submissions, um, especially if they view submissions that they make themselves, that might be useful or not view at all, just be able to add submissions. Okay. So that would probably be the most common for a data collector. Um, if you want to know more about this and how do you manage a big team and all of that kind of stuff, I'm going to recommend um, that you take a little bit more of an advanced course. And I've got others uh, that, that will help you work through that. But view form and add those submissions is what I'm going to say. Most data collectors really need to know. I will grant permissions. Now I'm going to jump into my phone. We're going to take a look at what, what does this look like when another user has access to my form? Okay. So I'm on my phone. If I tap that little circle in the upper right hand corner, I can actually add another user on this same device. So I'm going to add a project. Okay. And sure. While using the app, I'm going to manually enter project details. I'm going to put the same details here. Okay. I'm going to put my username and password. And remember this username and password is for the other user. Okay. I'm pretending that I'm now on their phone. Once I've done that, I'm then going to click add. Okay. At the bottom. 
and now it has switched to a different project. Now, if I go and hit that little circle in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that there are now two projects um, on this phone, but normally what another user would have their own phones. They'd be setting this up in their own app on their own phone, forward this course to them, and they can do this on their own, right? But I'm now in the Jana test um, account, not in the Jana R test account. Great. So then I would download a form and when they go to connect to the server, because you have shared access to them, they can now see first questionnaire. So it's there. Now you can see they can't see the other one because we haven't shared the other the other XLS form uh, from our uh, server. So we tick that, get selected, all downloads succeeded okay. Now when they click start new form, they can see first questionnaire in their data. Okay, so I'm in that Jana test, that other user account. Um, so second uh, account is my name and I'm going to add some data here. Okay, you're at the end of the first questionnaire and finalize. It sends it, ready to send, ready to send, ready to send. Oh, because I didn't set up the settings in this other one, right? So I'm gonna tick that, I'm gonna send selected, upload results, successful submissions, okay. You can see that it's sent. Now this one, because I didn't set up the settings, I can still see all the data, right? I haven't deleted it, right? So uh, I would need to go back to step three for that. So if you want to remember how to do that, and that's why it worked a little bit different when we were in this account rather than the other one. And now I'm gonna go back to my screen um, and we are looking here in first questionnaire. I'm gonna go back to this summary and you can see now that there are three submissions. Yeah, if I go back to projects, there are now three submissions because Jana Test, a completely different person, a completely different account, um, uploaded data. So if I go to the data tab here, I go all the way over to the end, you can see that Jana R Test and Jana R Test submitted two of them. Those were our first two. And then Jana Test, no R in the middle, they submitted the other one. So that is how you actually share uh, that form with another person and another user, and they can now submit data into your form. Now, this is step seven. You now have all of the very basic building blocks that you need to go out and run a Kobo Toolbox mobile data collection project, online, offline, anywhere in the world. This is an amazing tool and can get you started on the right, uh, the right next step. I am going to just end by going through, what do you do now, right? What are your next steps? So in Kobo Toolbox, there are a few other things you can learn, right? Some different question types, um, you know, getting more detailed into the skip logic, uh, putting more like validations or restrictions on, you know, can somebody be a 230 years old if we ask a number question about how old they are? You know, we, we wanna be able to get cleaner data as you progress in making better and better forms. And uh, this is not something you need the very first day you get into Kobo Toolbox, and it's not something we have covered in the first seven steps. But it's something that once you start putting your project together, you're gonna wanna know, well, how do I do some more advanced things? So there are some other things to learn now that you kind of know the basic building blocks. Likewise, you might wanna know more about how do you analyze this data in Power BI or Excel? How do you work with you know, those multiple choice questions? Or how do you work with repeat uh, questions? I hope the seven steps to getting started in mobile data collection using Kobo Toolbox has been super helpful. If it has been, I hope to see you back in the next video where I'm gonna describe what your next steps could look like, okay? What does that skills builder membership look like? How do you become the information manager that your project or that your team needs, okay? So go and do step seven. Make sure you can share data with someone else on your team. And when that's done, come back, watch my final video, and then I will send you on your way, hopefully into the Skills Builder membership where we'll get to work together a little bit more closely and figure out, okay, what do you do with your data uh, now that you've got some basic skills in mobile data collection, okay? I'll see you there and uh, good luck.